transfiguration. Jesus transfigured himself in front of his disciples. And this is something important that we need to understand how Jesus Christ went to the mountain and then through his disciples, Peter, John, and his brother. And when he was praying, he transfigured himself. He transformed himself. And then he appeared with Elijah and Moses spoken. He transformed himself in divine person. And this is something important that we need to understand in this process in our lives. Brothers and sisters, every moment is a moment that the Lord gave us in order to transform ourselves in Him. But we need faith. And what is the meaning about faith? Is to believe and trust. Faith also transfigures our personality more than we could ever imagine. That is what we ask for ourselves every moment in our lives, every day, every stage in our lives. To use this moment, this present time, to transform ourselves in Jesus. Let us start this moment of thanksgiving and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am going to speak today and then I'm going to continue to take Concepcion Cabrera in order just to guide us in this moment of trans to transform ourselves in Christ. And she wrote this in her diary in the book 64, 186. After God, nothing is so beautiful and as excellent as His glory, which is like the expansion of the divine, the divinization of creatures. For those who lack intelligence because of the vestige of God in their being and in their activity and in the perfection of intelligence beings, because by knowledge, love, and adoration and praise, they are filled with God, participate in Him, and even become gods by participation, according to the words of the Scripture. I have said it, you are gods. It is understood that after being God, in essence, there is nothing better than being gods by participation. Thus, the topic today, how can we, how can receive this new knowledge, this new invitation, this new even in be, uh, calling from God in order to understood our lives. Concepcion Cabrera understood that every moment in her life is a moment to transform himself, herself in Jesus Christ. And that's why even brothers and sisters is good to read the gospel in order to be aware and according to Matthew chapter 17 versicles 1 to 9 he wrote this beautiful statement Jesus took Peter and James and John his brother and he and led them up on a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them his face shined like the sun and his clothes became white as a light and behold Moses and Elijah appeared to them conversing with him the gospel of the Lord this beautiful gospel reminds us that idea that, G that Concepcion received from Jesus this exhortation after God nothing is, is so beautiful and as excellent as his glory Peter and John and his brother saw the glory of Jesus when they went to the Transfiguration Mountain. And they saw really Jesus transform himself in a divine person. And this is something important that we need to pay attention. How can we as a people of God be more aware about this exhortation? That's why even Concepcion emphasized in this idea and her book 64 numbers 186 and B she wrote this beautiful statement which is like the expansion of the divine the divinization of creatures of those who lack 
intelligence because of the best of God in their being and in their activity and in their perfection and of intelligence beings because by knowledge, love, adoration and praise they are filled with God and participate in Him and even becomes God's by participation according to this, the words of the scriptures. What Jesus said to His disciples in this event, event He told them be ready you belong to divine source and my father is the, that source he's the primary source to all of us we belong to him and our lives will be happy until we be with him and that's why even something important that we need to be more aware in this time the, this land we should be converted and transfigured so we resemble Jesus more and more. We want to be like Him, to reach heaven so we can be with Him. But can we pay the price for the cross? Will we be able to conquer our routine and mediocrity? Or mediocrity? Will we preserve on the road of faith that required us to be detached from things, to preserve in the use of the proper means, and to abandon ourselves in God's hands, to live in sanctifying grace, but with what will soon be the perfection of paradise? Jesus reminds us today, we need our souls transfigured by grace to shine as a rain of light in this world. That's why Jesus said, I am the light. I am the light of the world. And this is important to think about this message, to be able to show with their holy lives the light of the rising Christ. It is our mission. That's why Concepcion emphasized, after God, nothing is so beautiful and as excellent as His glory, which is like the expansion of the divine and the divinization of creatures. Jesus tells to his disciples, I came to the world to divinize you. I came to the world to enlighten you. I came to the world to bring heaven and earth. I came to the world to bring you new light. And I am the light. And this is something important. It is not question on understanding the person of Christ by accepting him. And that's why Faith transfigures our personality more than we can ever imagine. And that's why even Concepcion became more aware about this participation. Thanks to the fidelity in her mystical spiritual process, which is strengthened in the dialogues with Jesus, the writing of them, and the personal testimony of this woman, daughter, sister, wife, mother, widow, mother-in-law, and grandmother, it let us see that God, the Father, and His Son, through the action of the Holy Spirit, wants to give a new twist or twist the divinizing process of every Christian in the church, inviting all baptized to take seriously their vocation to divinization. And in, and, and in Mr. Concepcion, a person of the third world, late, with little education, calls her to live fully her baptism from her Mary and vocation. Her Mary vocation became so important to all of us. That's why Jesus took Peter, James, and John and told them, this is the mission, to be able. You as a lay person, you can be like me. And I am transfigured myself in front of you in order to be aware about the extra life that you have or the continual life that you have after this life. God is waiting you, is waiting for you, is waiting for you. And that's why it's so important to be more aware about how can we help the Holy Spirit in our lives 
to be part of this process. Conception reminds us this beautiful process. And that's why in from there from there we want to teach the Christians of the 21th century and the su subsequent centuries that each of every one of us is called to live the union with the Father and His Son through the action of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus came to the mountain of transfiguration, had a meeting with Elijah and Moses, and both of them explained the rest of his mission. But in that process, Jesus transfigured himself and became part of us and part of them. And this is something very special. This experience that the disciples lived is a mystical experience. They saw heaven close and heaven came back to the to earth and tells us that God is so close to us. That's why it's so important to be more aware and to continually to live our lives more kind with God. Brothers and sisters, Concepcion respond to several questions that arise in this mystical process. How does the soul on of conception participate in the presence of the three of the Trinity? How does this work of the cross of the apostleship occur in this divine process? How does the accomp accompaniment occur in the re relationship with the work of the Holy Trinity in the interior of her heart? Jesus, when he was talking with Elijah and Moses, they explain to Jesus that Jesus is going to take the cross. It means he had to die for the humanity. And that's why Concepcion even makes some questions. How can I understand my job? This apostle of the cross that she, she has and she received, Jesus explained to her this cross that she has to be ready. And she even need to increase her relationship in order to grow inside. Even it's important to make this question, how does the accompaniment occur in the relationship and in the work of the Holy Trinity and the interior of her heart? We will now answer the first of these questions in one of many texts that she writes. And she wrote this with remembering the divine persons i feel that the divinity absorbed me how she lived her life she understood and even she said in her book 61 in her diary number 78 with remembering the divine persons i feel that their divinity observes me and even, how do you respond to the call to become a live, a human and supernatural life incarnate by the divine, divine lies here on earth? Conception and the dialogues with Jesus write this. Among these divine persons, you must live, breathe and act. They muxiform your atmosphere, you breathe, your existence. This will sanctify your life and all that you are. They find your whole being and your path to heaven. And in other words, in her book, 25, 442, she understood this beautiful process. Among the, these divine persons, you must live, breathe, and act. They must form your atmosphere, you breathe, your existence. This will satisfy your life and all that you are. They find your whole being and your path to heaven. What is the purpose of transfiguration? Why Jesus transfigured himself? Because he invited us to be part of this process of divinization. That's why it's important to be aware Christ's transfiguration is also a call to hope 
an eternal life, in another words, a future glance of the glorious triumphant of, the, of Christ. When Peter writes to the first com communities, he recalls the experience of Mount Tabor. You have not yet seen Christ, yet you love him. Without sin, you believe in him, and you are happy in the radiant and unexpectable joy that is already transfiguring you. This text has been read for 2,000 years. Christ keeps giving us a reflection of his face, transfiguring whatever worries us about ourselves. And this is the exhortation. How can transfigurate our own worries? That's why Jesus said to Peter, Peter, please quiet. Do not speak now. Just listen. Give to my Father through me your worries, your anxieties, your lack of faith, your problems, your difficulties. I can take it to my Father. And Concepcion reminds us this beautiful statement in her diary, 35. Among the, these divine persons, you must live. That's why Jesus said to Peter, John, and, Jane, and James, please be in the presence of my Father. Be quiet. Listen. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you. And this transfiguration event is the presence of the Holy Trinity. It's another image and another event that we discover the presence of the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. That's why Concepcion emphasized this beautiful statement. Breathe and act. They must form your atmosphere. You breathe your existence. This will sant sanctify your life and all that you are. God wants for us to divinize everything. We can leave ourselves in Christ's hands and He will continue working in imperishable change and transfiguration in us at any stage of our lives. What is your worries that you have right now? What is your problems in this moment? And something that we need to be aware is this. Even brothers and sisters, something that we need to emphasize through John of the Cross this. In the words of the mystical doctor, Saint John of the Cross will say, only from God and open to him can men be understood from God because he is the maker who hath made him a keeps life and being. We discover this in John of the Cross and La Segunda Subida Number five, the ascension, number five. Even he is the one who had redeemed him, called him to his life to be God that participation. That is, the soul is the venice and tends to its center, God. He became one thing with him, like two flames that together form one without being able to move away. We discover this in John of the Cross, La Segunda Subida, 5-7. And this is in important. This is something that we need to pay attention how even Concepcion added this beautiful statement that brings us more light. In her diary, in her book, 25, Numbers 42-44, she wrote this, it is if he, my God, my Jesus life with, with, within him really absorbs and abstract in that sea without bottom of infinite perfection, like an atom in the immersity, immensity, like a, a bubble, like a coal in a valley or a snow, like a Flitter in the air, and all this feet beat is nothing for the smallest that I am within my world. Concepcion became aware that she was so small, like a bubble, like 
a small piece of snow, snow. But at the same time, she became so important to God. And this is something very interesting, how God lives inside in our hearts. He's so powerful that he's so, I can say big, but it's more than big, it is, it is immense. But at the same time, he takes the ability to be inside in us. He's living in us, but also he lives beyond us. And this is something very interesting that we need to be aware about how God is calling us through this lady, and especially today through the Gospel of Matthew, versicle, chapter 7, versicles 1 to 9. Even brothers and sisters, God is calling us constantly. And that's why even St. John of the Great, Leo the Great, Pope, wrote this beautiful statement in, her, in his Sermon 51, 3, 4. The law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The Lord revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses. His body is like that of the rest of mankind but he makes it shine with such a splendor that his face become like the sun in glory and his garments as a white as snow conception is spoken about this the great reason for this transfiguration was to remove from the scandal of the cross from the hearts of his disciples and to prevent the humiliation of his voluntary suffering from the disturbing the fate of those who have witnessed the surpassing glory that lay cons canceled. With no less for thought, he was also providing a firm foundation for the hope of Holy Church. The whole body of Christ was to understand the kind of transfiguration that it will receive at his gift. The members of that body were to look forward to a, a shame in that glory which first blazed out in Christ their head. The Lord has himself spoken of this when he foretold the splendor of his coming. Then the just will shine like the sun in the kingdom of, of their father. St. Paul the apostle bore witnesses to this same truth when he said, I considered that the sufferings of the present time are not to be compared with the future glory that is to be revealed in us. In another place, he says, you are dead and your life is hidden with, with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. How Concepcion Cabrera just make an analogy or translate according to her, she wrote this, it is as if he, my God, my Jesus lie with him, really absorbed and abstract in that sea without bottom of infinite perfections like an atom in the immensity, like a bubble, like a coal in a valley, or a snow, like a flitter in the air. And all this bit, bit is nothing for the smallest that I am within my world. Concepcionis remind us also that it's connected even through the gospel, even through the letters from from St. Paul and tells us how God is working with us. And this is important, brothers and sisters, this beautiful statement tells us something that we need to do every day. How can I use every moment in my life in order to please the Father, in order to transfigure my, myself and His Son? Every moment is a new light. It's a new opportunity. It's a new 
a space is a new even invitation that we can use it as a gift to transfigure ourselves. I am going to conclude it with this. To understand then what this divinization and union is like to find out what we are dealing with the most star from God Trinity who dwells in assist substantially from baptism in any soul even if it is that of the greatest sinner in the world. Why? Because the substance of the three persons of the Trinity is charity. Why Jesus invite John, Peter, and James through the mount, trans, to the mountain of transfiguration? Because through, through, her love, through his love, he invites them to say, come to me, you are my church, you are my people, you are my family, you are a part of me, and I need to share with you the divine experience, the divine life. And I am want to introduce you to my father, but also to Elijah and to Moses. I need to be there. And I invite you to be with me. Jesus even is dealing with us in order to see the whole Trinity in that experience and the, mon the mountain of transfiguration. The father is back. The clouds represent and the light, the Holy Spirit, and the presence of Jesus transform himself, transform himself in the divine person. And that's why Concepcion emphasized this beautiful statement. Even she wrote this beautiful idea because the substance of the three persons of the Trinity is charity. In another words, the purest love a communication which is why it is called charity because it is communicates and is the most perfect love of charity therefore the purity of love does not consist only in the lack of selfishness but and it is divinization it is divinization of the powers of the soul freedom, will, and intelligence, and memory. From the inner and outer sense, that is divinization that passes from the soul to the body. That's why Jesus passed through the human condition, through divine condition. And Jesus tells us another, through this experience, like a good analogy, he used a good analogy your whole soul is going to transfigure it in me. Your whole being will be like me. But you, you need to be obedience. You need to use your potential of your soul, your freedom, your will, your memory, your intellect, in order to be part of this process. Even Concepcion wrote this beautiful statement. The mysterious and full invasion in, of the beloved observes every desire of the soul. The mind and the soul remain absorbed in the divinity. The Lord has my soul absorbed with a, an attention to the divine. Concepcion became so aware in, in her diary, no, uh, the, the 28, the book 28, number 71, as well as that her diary, the book 60, 112, remind us how God is going to absorb all the limitations, all the pain, all the suffering, all the difficulties. That's why he spoke about to his disciples, I am going to die for you. I am going to take the cross. And the cross means all the sins, all your problems, all your even disobedience, all your sins, I am going to take it. And Jesus reminds us, it's through my power and the power of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit that you are going to receive that blessing. Concepcion spoke very well 
the mysterious and full invasion of the beloved absorbed every desire of the soul. And that's why Jesus transformed completely in the month of transfiguration. He completed himself. And before Jesus died, Jesus transformed himself in divine person in order to tell John, Peter, and James that he has the power to observe ourselves and to transform everything in a new good things. And that's why we need to be aware about how Jesus came to this world in order to help our souls, in order to help our body, in order to help us to be like him. The, and even Concepcion added this, the mind and the soul remain absorbed in the divinity. That's why Peter, when he saw Elijah and Moses spoken through Jesus, he saw that the divine world arrived to, to them. And that's why Peter has spoke to Jesus. Jesus, let us make th these three tents. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. And Jesus said, please be quiet. Listen to my father. And that's why the Lord has my soul as if absorbed with an attention to the div to divine. That's why Jesus emphasized constantly to Peter, to John, and James, please. It's through my Father that you are going to receive the blessings. And that's why you need to listen, my, my Father. I came to this mountain in order to listen Him. And Moses and Elijah explained to me about my final destination. In order to be back to heaven. In order to recover again my divinity. And Jesus said, but I will like to be back with you. That's why Jesus called to his disciples as God's called conception, come to me, my daughter, and I am going to take you to my father. That's why Jesus called Peter and James and John to say, come to me and let us go to the mountain of transfiguration in order to present to my father. You are part of me. And this is the calling, brothers and sisters. And this way of union has always existed between God and the creatures conserving the being that they had so that if they lack any of it in them, they will annihilate and cease to be. Even one of the good writings, Velasco, comments on this. This is the union of the soul with God that he calls substantial or in and or essential or natural, thanks to which he gives being to the creatures with this assistance, face with this one that is always made. St. John of the Cross referred throughout his work to another union that is not always made, but only when there comes to be a similarity of love union, then of singularity or resemblance. It will be said to give to the term the di dynamic sense that the tradition has been given from the fathers, supernatural. This first characterization summarizes a good part of his doctrine. This is something very profound that Jesus tells us today. The doctrine of Jesus is to present to us that we belong to divine nature. Jesus tells us and emphasizes through this beautiful gospel from Matthew 17, 1 to 9, tells us how powerful is his doctrine. It's not belong only to him. It's also belong to the Father. And that's why even belong to the process of Elijah and Moses does the process of being more aware about our own experience. God said to all of us, I know that you have your own history and I am going to take you history and to bring you back to me. Let us conclude with this first 
conclusion, brothers and sisters, in order to be more aware. Therefore, men open to the triumphant triduum God discovers that he was made for him. Because of him, he was received his existence, and he is his Alpha and the Omega. Father, may they all be one like you and I are one. Father, may they will be one like you and I are one. We discovered this in John 15, 28. And that's why Jesus emphasized, come to me, be with me, be one with me. And that's why Concepcion came and followed Jesus and, and she became one of Jesus. And, the, and Jesus presented to the Father. And what happened? She always became aware about the will of the Father and Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us that you need to pay attention and I need to pay attention in this process of divinization. We need to be one with Jesus. As Peter and John and James went to the mountain of transfiguration and became one with Jesus. And Jesus took them to the Father and present them to Elijah and Moses. And I think he asked for, for help and for intercession and for, for prayers for them. That's why the Father spoke to Peter and Paul and James, this is my beloved son in whom I am pleased my well. This is something important that we need to celebrate. This is the second conclusion. In the words of Concepcion, he wrote this, I would like to be a cloud to observe you, Jesus, and reign in many hearts by soaking them in you. This is how he understands his mission. I would like to be like a cloud to observe you and reign in many hearts by soaking them in you. This is beautiful. That's why what happened in the mountain of transfiguration, God called his son and his son transformed himself in pure light, in a new light, in a divine light. And the, the disciples saw him and say, oh my God, really Jesus is the son of the living God. He is. He is the son of the living God. And then the clouds came. And what happened? Involved them. And the father said, you are in my hands. That's why this cross, this cross represents even a good way to understand the mountain of transfiguration. This event also is, is present through these clouds. These clouds represent the father. We are in the Father's hand. Hence, this is important. And that's why even the mission of Concepcion became so aware. How can be more aware about her mission? She said to all of us, listen, listen. As Jesus said to his disciples, and be quiet. And third, be obedient. And fourth, Follow Jesus, his step, his step, and fifth, be like Jesus, because Jesus is going to take you to the Father, and the Father is going to tell you, I love you. I'm going to conclude it with this beautiful statement when St. Paul said, I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not to be compared with the future glory that is to be revealed in us. In another place, he says, you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This marvel of the transfiguration contains another lesson for the apostles. To strengthen and lead them into the fullness of knowledge, Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets appear with the Lord in conversation with him. This was in order to fulfill exactly through the presence of these five men, the text which 
which says before two or three witnesses every word is ratified. What word could be more firmly established, more securely based on the word which is proclaimed by the trumpets of both of old and new testaments, sounding in harmony and by the utterances of ancient prophecy and the teachings of the gospel in full agreement with each other. These writings of the two testaments support each other. The radiance of the transfiguration reveals clearly and unmistakably the one who are being promised by signs foretelling him under the veils of mystery. And St. John says, the law has given through Moses grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. In him the promise made through the shadows of prophecy stands revealed along with the full meaning of the precepts of the law. He is the one who teaches the truth of prophecy through his presence and makes obedience to the commandments possible through grace. Through this beautiful reflection I invite you to be aware and to be part of this process. Jesus tells us today, you are part of me and do not be afraid. Be with me. May the Lord bless you and be always aware. And Jesus remind you, you are important to me. I invite you and I call you and remember this. I call you to be with me because I am going to, pre to present to you to present you to, to, to my Father. And do not be afraid to be part of me, because you will see heaven and earth. May God bless you and bring you peace to you, and t keep you, your body and your soul always pure, and especially be part of this process of divinization. May God bless you always, and especially in these days that we are worried about many things. Do not be afraid. God is with us. The Lord with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Keep you, you are in your soul with pure and be always together. God bless you. In God's will, I will see you tomorrow.